I'm going to start with the big question as a fan of the series. I need to find out if Tim Cook actually watches this thing, because I would figure <laughs> that if he does, it's going to be on the air a long time. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that he is a fan of the show. Apple has been really supportive of the show in so many ways. And, uh, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can uh, be on for a long time. Yes, I need that to happen. So, so you guys, <laughs> you guys, after season one, um, you get picked up for season two. I'm curious, at that moment, how much are you starting to think about, okay, we better figure out a five-year plan, or did you already have that prior to season one? Actually, one of the earliest conversations we had, Matt, I, Matt and Ron, we discussed a, fi- a plan moving forward decades in terms of what this show, what the timeline of the show would look like um, from this moment of the Russians landing on the moon first. So we were prepared uh, to take the story uh, far into the future. And I think the exciting thing of the season two and now a pickup for season three is it really allows us to kind of jump forward in time and show how this the impact this kind of change really had on history. Well, something that I'm curious about is you guys are dealing with the changing decades. And with season two, we move into the early 80s. If the season, if the show continues, is there going to be a point where you see yourself sort of like starting almost with a whole new cast? Uh, because, you know, there's, people can only get so old and be participants in the NASA program. I mean, in terms of the characters, uh, there will be characters that phase in and out of the show. You know, it's just na- the nature of our show is that, uh, you know, otherwise by season six, we'll have a bunch of 130-year-old astronauts. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, so we're constantly introducing new characters. But I do think we have a plan where, uh, to Ben's uh, reference about our, our sort of uh, very early discussions about about the full scope of the show, there are characters that will go through the whole way and some that won't. So it's sort of a, a mixture of uh, of all of the above. Yeah, and it's not just new characters. It's also ca- recasting characters who are kids in earlier, you know, the kids in season one, we recast them as... So there's a, a mix and, and match, but also I have to say that the technology now and the makeup effects that are available to us is insane. Like you can you can really do a lot in terms of aging. And we did a lot, even with season two, in terms of the the 10 year jump, as you saw, um, in terms of those changes. So I think, you know, I think there's, we look at how people change and I think that informs us, but yeah, depending on how long the show goes, that will definitely come into question at some point. Um, Have you already thought about what season would introduce a starship? (laughs) <laughs> hmm, that's uh we're we're still figuring that one out we're still uh, <laughs> we're not sure but we're headed that way you know i mean we're definitely headed towards yeah. so funny it's like seeing the news now of all the things that are that are uh, happening um in the real space programs and with spacex and with uh you, you know what nasa's doing and now there's there's all these uh countries sending unmanned uh missions to mars and it's so fun to see uh, things we talk about in the room unfolding in real life now, I think it's, you know, so the sky's the limit. It definitely, you know, early on we talked about the show being a more like about more hopeful future. And I think that is where like the, the Star Trek comes in and the idea of, you know, what that hopeful future can be. So I feel like while there wouldn't be a starship, I think every year you will see the technology um, expand and increase. And, and I don't know, the, it'll get cooler and it'll get into areas that we aren't as familiar with. You know, I think season one was a lot about like, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Season two starts to be like, wait, I remember that. But that that looks a little different. That's, so it's, it starts to evolve. And I think by season three, it'll just be a lot more stuff that we're not familiar with at all. You know, the sea dragon, I think, is a great example of something that it was an idea conceived in history. I mean, there were blueprints for it and everything, but it was never created. So we, that's a, the promise of the show, really, is that you can take these, these ideas and bring them to life. I feel like that, that like the sea dragon, and there's, there's other little things that are coming up like that. Uh, I, I get it. Uh, one of the things <laughs> that I want to talk specifics, but I can't. One of, the things I about, <laughs> one of the things about this series is that there's a lot of characters, and there are so many places where you could spend the entire season just with the general and dealing with the Pentagon or the military aspect, or just, you know, there's so many places you can spend time. What is it like in the writer's room trying to figure out, we have all this, this huge canvas, where do we want to play? It's exhausting. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's it, it's there's a lot to keep track of and and uh, you know it's it, it's one of the things I love most about the show is is the the breadth of the characters and the different stories we get to tell but it's we also have to be very economical with our storytelling and how we present those moments and finding even if a character isn't really featured in an episode finding a moment to um, give them uh, a way to move their story forward. And then, uh, you know, at certain episodes, we'll focus more on that character. Uh, so it's, it's really, we talk about it kind of as a symphony where in different parts of the symphony, different instruments rise to the fore, even the, and then they'll go in the background, but they're still a part of the piece of music. Obviously you guys know I'm a fan. I know you got picked up for season three. Uh, where are you in the writing process of season three right now? Um, we are, as you know, we're just finishing season two and we started, we're in the writer's room for season three right now. So we're, we're kind of with the writers through Zoom, which is definitely a little different. Um, but coming up with ideas, it's been a lot of fun. I guess we're very excited about the season three pickup and the, and the confidence Apple has in us. Um, but also the ability to take this story even further into the future where our history is really exciting. So I think right now we're writing, starting the script soon. And uh, yeah, we're gearing up for it. So we're pushing ahead. When you are writing the scripts, how much of the season is actually finished before you start filming? And how much is it sort of like you're writing as the season is going? Well, the goal at the beginning is always to have all the scripts done before we start shooting. And then that never actually happens. I think first season of Fargo was the only time we were ever, <laughs> we had all the scripts ready before. So it, it really just depends. I think uh, with season two, it was kind of a, a mixture. Uh, we had maybe three or four done before we started. And then uh, we were writing as we went. Um, and one of the fun things about a television show is you see how characters how new characters uh, play in the first couple episodes and you can write to that. So there's a lot of revisions that also happen where, oh, that thing we thought was going to play in the writer's room isn't really playing. So we need to adjust that. And uh, that's one of the really fun parts about, uh, about producing a TV show. And Do you guys end up with a lot of deleted scenes or not really? Not, you know, not really, actually. I think there are some, but, but, Looking through, I mean, look, the, I think inevitably certain episodes go too long and you have to do it and it's painful. But I feel like for the most part, there aren't many scenes that we've we've cut um, overall. Yeah. Uh, I guess my, I, I'm curious, were there storylines you came up with with season two that couldn't be worked in due to time budget that you're like, that's a great story. We're bringing that to season three. <laughs> Um, let me think. Well, it's tricky because of our time jumps. A lot of times the storylines, uh, are based in that period of history. So it's, it's tricky to do that. So a lot of times we, there are stories that come up in the room that I love that we have, we just don't have the room for. And I think like Matt said earlier, this, we have a huge ensemble. And I think part of what makes the show work really well is the, not the ability just to show astronauts, but to show the engineers, to show the families. Like we'd love to be able to show all, all parts of the ensemble. And I think in order to do that, you do have to, you know, you do have to give up on some ideas that we that we really love. So it's hard, but I think in the end you end up with the best stories. You know, when you have to go through that process as a writer, you find out it's painful, but it gives you the best result usually. And to add to that, uh, while it's not necessarily like storylines, I do think sometimes there's scenes. Like there's definitely a few awesome death scenes we've come up with over the last couple of years that we w we wound up being like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't kill off that character at this point. And then we couldn't use that death scene, but there's still, uh, you know, it was fun to have those in our heads uh, at some point. We have a very creative room, <laughs> very bloodthirsty, yeah. but creative. It's my last question for you, because I think I'm going to be out of time with season two, the big like set that you got to add was the Jamestown set, which is incredible. Um, yeah. It seems like every season of a TV show, you get to build one new set. Have you already thought about what that new set might be on season three? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't say much more than that, but we definitely... I mean, what's funny about our show is because we jump so much in time, we actually... We, we, we build a lot more new sets every year than a regular show, uh, and, we, and we retire a lot of sets. So it's definitely... Um, there's going to be a lot of fun new stuff in season two and in season three. 
Yeah, I mean, the show gets bigger and bigger every year, really. I mean, the nature of this is the more you go into the alt history, the more you go into science fiction. And so, yeah, like Matt said, we have to, it's a reset every year, but it's exciting. You know, the challenge is, you know, we're going to have something big that you haven't seen before every season of the show. So, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> I wish I could say more, but it's, you know, it's... I, I get it. I'm just going to say, as soon as you finish 9 and 10, please send. Um, and listen... Uh, have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks for the great work. Thanks, Thanks man. Good to see you.